Hi, welcome to another motion tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to go over how to use a camera and a couple of very, very basic uh, functions. But um, camera is really not that hard to use in motion, I find. So um, let's get into it. This tutorial, we're just going to use uh, three text layers and have a camera fly through those texts. And it might be a cool little thing, again, for a resume reel or uh, a movie intro for um, a trailer. Um, so uh, here we go. I'm going to actually delete the camera there so we start off with a clean slate first thing I want to do is make a text so I'm going to click on the text tool here come down here to the window and I'm just going to do a countdown three two one so my first one's going to be a three and I'm going to size that up make that kind of big yeah, something like that and for now we'll just center in the frame like that now a shorthand cut to make I want to do a three two one so I'm always just duplicate this layer three times so to do that I'm just going to hit command D two more times and this one here I'm going to not unselect that so I can see the, this copy I'm going to change that to a two and this copy I'm going to unselect this one here which was originally three I'm going to change that to a one so now if you look at that that's one and I might just rename that there it goes one this is going to be a two and this is going to be a three now that's going to be one group so now I want to add another group and this group, I'm going to label this camera, or just cam, it's fine. Come here, and I'm going to say new camera. It's going to ask me if I want to switch everything over to 3D. I'm going to say yes, because we're going to be using a camera. So I'm going to say OK. So now I have a camera, and I have three text layers, if you look in here. Usually with a camera and the text layers, I like to split them up into um, at least um, a thousand um, points as far as going in the Z space. So if you look over here in the position and on the transform we got position. Now that we're working in 3D we have an X, a Y, and we also have a Z dimension to everything. So the first one, this three right here is fine. This two here, I want to move that back a thousand. So we're going to swing that back down there. It could be anywhere. Say right there. And then I'm going to go to the one. Since the two's at a minus a thousand, I want to bring this one down to minus two thousand. And I'll show this to you where it makes more sense in a second. When you work in 3D space, you have different perspectives here. I got a top perspective, a right, a bottom, and a left. I want to. Sh you can you can click on these to take a look at. It. If we go to the top, you're going to see my numbers are right here. Here's one. Here's the other one. And if I make this a little bit smaller, probably I can get all three of them in there. That's one. This is two, and that's three, as far as my numbers. So we're going to start with three, we're going to go to two, and then we're going to go to one. But I can see them all in there. They all look like they're evenly spaced, so that's good. So let's go back to the three. Let's go to the front perspective again. Actually, let's go to camera perspective. So now i got my camera. And then you'll see, if I highlight the camera, and I actually... rotate it you're going to see them all lined up and again this could be useful just doing something like this but for my purposes here I don't want to do that so right now I'm just going to go command Z edit undo now with that camera selected there are a couple ways you can do this one is by adding a behavior going camera and going dolly and what dolly will do is right now it's not set to do anything but if you go to distance on here and set it for a distance it will actually as this is going, go through each one of these. And it's already pre-made and it's pretty smooth. So if you look at it, maybe give a little bit of a pause at the start. So we start there and move the dolly down and it starts going through them. Three, two, and one. Now it takes a little while for it to get doing that. Just to, if you want to make it go quicker, all you got to do is grab this preset here and drag it in and it will go a lot quicker. So now if I play it back, it's going to fly through three, two, and one. Now, a couple of other tricks I like to use is I'm going to have these fade in, obviously. So I'm probably going to go, well, I'm definitely going to go down the timeline here and bring offset two a little bit and offset three a little bit. And on two, I'm going to add a dissolve. So I'm going to go basic motion, fade in, fade out. On the fade out, I just usually don't even bother. I just kind of bring it back to zero frames for that one 
And then on the third one, I want to have that one fade in too. So I'll go here, basic motion, fade in, fade out. And uh, bring that back there. So the in's going to have a 20 frame fade out, but the out zero is going to be any. And I'll show you how that works in a second. It doesn't really matter because the camera's flying by them anyway. So if we start now, we got the one. Oh, looks like I made a mistake there. Three should be number one because that means that we're just kind of doing a countdown. Three, two, one. And then one should always be over here, should be over here. And then if we add one and do a basic motion fade in, fade out. Now we start with the three. We have the two. And we have the one. So these all have to be retimed a little bit. Like I said if you, in an earlier tutorial, if you hold the shift key down, it'll snap to the where the playhead's at. So I want one to fade in there. If I go back here, three is fine till about right there. And then I want the two to start fading in. So now if I play it back. Start with the three. The two fades in. And the one could probably get going a little bit quicker. Like that. And there's the one. A couple other things you can do. Bring us back to the beginning. Go to camera. The camera has its own set of behaviors too. And I usually like to do a little far fade and near fade. kind of. And you'll see here, as that three is coming in, it fades out and the two fades in kind of because we set the two to fade in so the two and one look good the two can actually fade in a little bit earlier now if we go here click on the two slide that over a little bit more so now when we do it we have the three we have the two and we have the one and that adds a three-dimensional type view of a camera flying through numbers I'll have some more camera tutorials coming up but that's a, a nice little quick one and um, works pretty well. One other tip I'll show you. If you said, well, I really don't want a black background. I want a different background. You can add backgrounds, but a nice easy way of doing something, if you just want to use a color solid, is you go to Project Properties, and you change the background color here in Project Pro in, uh, Properties. Say you want it to be yellow. You hit there and you go, OK. Actually, let's make this solid. Go OK. Now, when you look at numbers, it's pretty bright, but um, you'd get someone's attention with this. Uh, three, two, one. And it's not too bad. I might actually highlight each number just to show you. And I'd probably go to style and I'd probably would add a drop shadow for sure just because of the, the contrast of colors. Um, you know, a little bit like that. Um, and now if I play it back, I can at least live with it a little bit. Whoops. Put it back here. So again, it's a nice little quick camera tutorial. Um, hopefully uh, you learned a little bit with it. And um, like I said, cameras can be really fun. You can actually keyframe the camera to move in any direction. But for a nice little quick move, some of these presets that are in the behaviors can work well. Um, have fun playing with it, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.